We're talking about No Man's Sky and a number of other games that were one thing at launch and something else entirely at much time later after they were subject to mega patching. Something that isn't just a, a small number of tweaks and fixes, but a dramatic change. A huge update that makes the game one thing at launch and something else, fingers crossed, actually good months after the fact, uh, sometimes, in No Man's Sky's case, years after the fact. Hello Games dropped the No Man's Sky Next update. The game also hit uh, Xbox One. This is almost two years after the game initially launched. It came out August 2016. There was a lot of disappointment going around because people thought there would be a uh, multiplayer. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. People were expecting dinosaurs running around in lakes. They were expecting all the, basically like the crazy terrain planets that had been shown in the trailers and what the game actually released with was not at that level. So there were, there's a huge, huge backlash. Hello and welcome to another behind the scenes in Sea of Thieves today. I'm joined by design director Mike Chapman and software engineer Topher Winward and we are here to talk NPCs. So... Like, what kind of role do NPCs play in our game? Well, I think we've always been really clear in the vision of the game in that players are the main characters of Sea of Thieves. There you are. Oh, Hi. oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> You're you, hideous. You look like someone found out what the liquify tool in Photoshop is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like someone took the bulge tool oh. to every part of your face. <laughs> but at the same time, you still got these characters that have come to the world with their own motivation. And I think part of the work we're doing now is to turn them from just, well, I guess if you play the technical alpha, we've got a single clothing seller, a single shipwright that we've just duplicated around the world. But now we start to put in more variety of NPCs, but also give them a little bit of a backstory. So I think one of the, I guess one of the cool things about Rare as a company is that it's always had this reputation for these kind of colourful characters that have each got their own personality and that's something that will be alive and well in Sea of Thieves. So the gold hoarders are deliberately a little bit miserable, they're a little bit miserly and that can't, that's reflected in not only their vocalisations, how they greet you and how they say goodbye, but also in their text. Merchants are a little bit stuffy, they're a little bit more restrained, like, may I be of assistance? Like, a little, a little <laughs> bit stuffy. And the Order of Souls are pretty creepy. There's this kind of, well, they seem like they're helpful, but they might have ulterior motives. So there's something, there's a kind of general creepiness around the Order of Souls. On every planet, you can expect to see the same outpost and shelters over and over. Each space station has the same NPC sitting in the same looking chair, offering up a speech check in the same looking room. Despite the fact the space station is as big as a planet, there's only ever one person working there. A game that will allow our players to have unique and memorable adventures together. A shared world adventure game. Set in a fantastical world, this game will bring players together and give them the freedom to play with limitless possibilities. This is by far the most ambitious game Rare has ever created. Are there forms of life in this game that are beyond normal comprehension? I'd like to think so. Do the animals eat each other? Yeah, they do. This is a genetic disorder called hereditary angioedema. And when you look at these faces side by side, what most people think is occurring here is an allergic reaction. They have to be extremely careful because when this happens, it can get you can get so swollen that you can close your airway. airway. Right. I, I saw this in my ENT days. Yeah. So you can't make a fun game just based on algorithms, like just being procedurally generated, just being a ton of content isn't going to make something fun. No Man's Sky feels like a game without a soul, which it kind of is. I mean, it's hard to find something meaningful in something that's being created by a kind of algorithm. This whole game, it is a 
multi-quintillion planet universe <laughs> that's all generated. It's obvious you can't do that by hand. You'd die first. Right. So it's, it's all, the game's built on algorithms you've talked about in the past. So my first question to you, and this is a genuine question, <laughs> do you consider yourself a genius? <laughs> I could really care less about procedural generation. In fact, I wish developers would just stop using it. It takes all the thought and craft out of video game design, and as a result of using it, you're likely to see some absolutely retarded shit. There are major optimization issues. I tested this out both on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and both consoles seem to have a lot of issues with frame rate actually sticking when you're trying to go back into orbit, and ah, this is the worst thing of all, my game crashed hard 11 times in 6 hours. Yes, you heard me correctly, 11 times. Recharge. It's a wing, a tail wing, but it's pretty much a spitting him. You know, there's also a Kraken, which is truly the epitome of this game. It looked really cool during the marketing, but turns out there's nothing there beneath the surface, and the actual battle was anticlimactic and unrewarding. We've made the decision for now just to temporarily disable Skeleton Forts and the Kraken um, so that we can go ahead with releasing Curse Ailes. Uh, it's not a position that we want to be in. It's not ideal at all. Obviously, in future, this isn't something a position that we want to be in. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Marketing and hype have kept many a released game going while their developers toil away on much needed fixing and content addition. This is an issue that's only gotten cloudier as publishers have embraced the live service model where games are now launched with the expectation they'll wind up a different experience by the end. And substantial portion of digital revenues are microtransactions. When you are six hours into playing Battlefield and you run out of ammo in your clip and we ask you for a dollar to reload you're really not very price sensitive at that point in time um and for what it's worth the cogs on the clip really low and so um essentially what ends up happening and the reason the, the play first pay later model works so nicely is the consumer gets engaged in a property they might spend 10 20 30 50 hours on the game and then when they're deep into the game, they're well invested in it. We're not gouging, but we're charging. And at that point in time, the commitment can be pretty high. As a personal anecdote, I've spent about $5,000 calendar year to date on doing just this thing, this type of thing on our products and others. Um, I can readily attest to uh, how well it works. Um, but it is a, it's a great model, and I think it represents a, a substantially better future for the industry. If this is the path the industry is intent on going down, then it is genuinely unwise to buy games until a year later when the GOTY version's out and the game's been patched until it's actually good. I don't think that's what game patches should exist for, and I don't think it's healthy for the industry. You can tell there's parts of the islands that are made to house quests later on, sure. like that big arena fighting pit that we saw earlier. What are you doing? Look at this awesome boss arena. That's it. What the fuck? Look at your character! Look at your character! Look at your character! Outcast, come here! Everybody get to me. Everybody come to me. Oh no! I can't handle that. <laughs> I've had some performance issues on PC. That game mm. has been a little bit... Really? Yeah.
during that initial loading shader screen, like I had like five frames a second. Oh wow! And I, you know what? I had the same thing. Once it loaded in, it was yeah, fun. Yeah, too on PS4. But yeah. it's almost yeah. like it was writing something, or yeah. it was going through its its generation. It was it was rolling a lot of dice. Yeah. Take off your shirt. No. No. <laughs> Good no. try. Whoa, why is it no, like... No, I won't do that. Chuggy a little bit. That's fine. No. Uh, no, this menu can chug. It's ironing out all the kinks. Uh, Aqua Futura says, got my first bug. My cockpit keeps opening and closing during fighting. Or during flight. Oh. That sounds cool. Okay. Just press pressing, please. Uh, we did that. Oh, 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 um. Look at all these planets slowly <laughs> coming our way. It's it's like we put on the slow mo mode. Okay, I'm good. I've been watching them play mainly. Like Rob's excited. Jake's excited. <laughs> This is taking a while. Maybe it's like the first time load. Because what do, what is this PC? It's, it's uh, got a 1070 in it. It's got an i7. They're also the there's some. I don't know if you guys have this problem. I'm having some draw distance issues. The, but the one thing I've run into on the PlayStation side is there's like a sound bug. So you're playing PS4. Yeah, I'm playing okay. PlayStation 4. So as soon as you like launch or like you turn your like jet engines on to like go anywhere, the audio kind of like clips. So it's like, and then the engines kick in. Oh. When I was trying to stream it, it would immediately just crash the game. Um, and then we would also have issues where like, um, we literally the planet I landed on before we got to the center of the uh, universe um, was mining resources, and then the ground just disappeared, and I sunk right into the center of the the planet. What made you stick with it for that long? Because that seems like the oh. most masochistic thing. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing that my my brother would always say to me that I was like 50% playing games, 50% making broken stuff,
Craig or Studio Head, it said it's our most ambitious game ever. Yeah. And that turned out to be true. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we we uh, we declared that if you don't like Sea of Thieves, you don't like video games early on in the preview process. And uh, we still believe that. And it's been a long time since I was as disappointed with a game on release as I am Sea of Thieves. I was pretty hyped for this, I'm not gonna lie. But at $60, this can only fairly be described as a ripoff. It just feels like this game is still almost in beta. It feels like it's not a full, big, head-on release of a AAA game. One of the most interesting things we learned there, um, or at least for me, which instantly was like game mechanic, we're doing that, um, was the, the phrase rats leave in a sinking ship is actually yeah. based on, um, because the rats used to live in the bottom of the ship where all the food was. Um, but basically if water started coming onto the ship, they'd obviously they'd flee up and you'd see them running around the top and on the ropes. And at that point, it's basically a feedback mechanic that you're sinking. We went back and we prototyped it and we got it in and it's great. And, and I'd much rather that than a health bar, right, on the screen. Yeah, for you sure. Know, you want to hear the water coming in and you want to hear the rats squeaking and then you're like, oh, we need to go and fix the holes. We need to go and fix so the holes. So is that what happens in this game? Rats Sorry? just start coming um, up? Not in this, but we prototyped it back happen. at the office. Within one year, Sea of Thieves is going to be a completely different game than what it is now. This game, it pretty much released as a blank, a blank canvas. Sea of Thieves is Xbox's main games as a service. Games as a service being over time, it builds and builds and builds. We were hoping for a lot more in the full game. We're like, oh, this is this the beta. In the full game, there's gonna be a lot more. Where, where we start to play the game, we were a little going, oh, it's kind of a lot like the beta. We can get into a position where we're getting to spend four or five or even six months on an update and we can deliver that every six to eight weeks. Like, our game's gonna get crazy rich. Yeah. You get a little initial feeling of wanderlust when you start up the game for the first time and you go to a couple islands and then you realize there's nothing on there. You can't find anything aside from planks, bananas, and cannonballs. It's really boring. We're looking at getting into that rhythm of adding new little features, adding new content as, as we move forward, um, and really growing on the kind of, um, the base of Sea of Thieves that we, that we launched with. I, we, we kept getting kicked off, uh, being online all the time. We know it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you try and get into a game and you can't, or you have an issue in the game that, that's a bug or caused by something else. Uh, it's frustrating for us as much as it is for you. The top issue we've got here is that players are having access, um, or sorry, access issues during peak time. When your business is to make an online game, and it's only online, you can't play it offline, it's not as though I could go do a one player mode or anything like that, and you can't play that online game, there's an issue. It's not just, you know, turning on servers and having people join. It's actually about, it is about join rates. It is about message queues. It is about how many things in our services are getting hit with what concurrency. I guess what's a good thing is not all of these issues are affecting all players. Yep. I very much feel like I'm playing an alpha of a game rather than a full release. And I realize there are plans to introduce new things like fishing and whaling and stuff. But to me, it's too little too late everybody's been on you guys bring sailing bring whaling bring other sort of aspects into the game you've said somebody needs to come and ask you so we're here we're coming to ask you yes what is that around what are we asking so are we going to see sailing are we going to see whaling or fishing or anything like that into the game as a sort of little side activity uh, we hear the ask. Like <laughs> we hear the ask. No, that we know there's a lot of passion for it. And Jez, Jez Corden, especially. I don't know yes. if you're from Window yes. Central. Yes. Like, my God, what, like when will he stop? Um, <laughs> like when we put it in, hopefully. I mean, this is really a full released product. You're charging the full amount of money. You haven't labeled it as early access forms of anything, but it still feels like it's not even in the beta stages. Aside from maybe the polish in most of the mechanics. Shooting him. Is cannon. that the cannon tower? Yeah. the cannon tower. Go for the cannon tower. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Good. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Holy shit, guys. TJ.
there was an, an interview with Joe Neat, one of Rare's executive producers on the game, um, with US Gamer a while ago when they dropped information like that there was going to be like pet DLC and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, in this article, it mentions that they're looking at the first big major update to be like within three months after the game launches. Too within long. Yeah. It's, too it's too long, long. And, it, and if they try yeah. to sell me anything more for this game, I'll lose my shit. Yeah, yeah. It's a $60 game for very little content. From they what cannot, it says here, <laughs> they there's, sell there's more stuff. A, they want players to be going after the whole like uh, legendary status with the pirates. For the but what does it Why? do? Speaking Chomp, it was a, a wonderful example of how, how our community latched on to using that that in the in so many unique and fun ways right i'm sure you guys have been having fun with that as well but like shelly our senior designer was playing and she heard another ship kind of basically they just went uh, hello this is wendy's um like can we take your order please and um <laughs> so so shelly was like uh can i get a cheeseburger and fries and they were like uh sorry we've only got bananas um, <laughs> and, um <laughs> like i think shelly was playing our, our senior designer and uh, a boat kind of approached them and was like Hey, this is Wendy's. Um, what would you like to order? <laughs> it was like, oh, uh, cheeseburger and chips. Yeah, sorry, we only have bananas. Shelly, Shelly, Shelly. Well, as, as Mike said, like the Devil's Roar area is all about that, the world coming alive. Like, so we've. Shelly, 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 Shelly. There's a laundry list of things this game promised us but did not deliver. Things like different ship classes for different play styles, landing on asteroids, destroying space stations and fleets, huge space battles between warring factions, scanning the galactic map to find the resources you need on different planets, and having the availability of those resources be dependent on how far away the planet is from the sun. Crashed freighters, portals at work, none of it is there. Artifact? Artifact. Inventory full. We're dead in 
cool stuff in this release that we wanted to stay, kind of stuck to the, to the original release date. Uh, and all of our efforts right now, obviously apart from releasing Curse Sales to you all, is now just going and fixing those performance issues and making sure that we can then re-enable them as soon as possible. Bichelli, 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 Bichelli. I'm never gonna dance again.